Hello, and thanks for joining us for this video case tip. I'm Bryn McBride of ABC for Health, and today we're taking a quick walk through the House health care bill that passed on May 4th. We'll take a look at what's included and what's next. Well, this is the American Health Care Act. This actually was supposed to come up for a vote at the end of March, but the House couldn't get enough votes together, so they didn't even call for a vote. It then went back to some committee members and some House members to try to implement some amendments to make it more palatable to some of the Freedom Caucus members and some of the more moderate Republicans inside the House of Representatives. They did just that. They talked to Representative Palmer, Representative MacArthur, and Representative Upton, for starters, to introduce some amendments that made some changes to the original version of the bill. That is the version that then went up to the House of Representatives and was voted on. It is the House version of the bill. It was voted on May 4th, and it is now going on to the Senate. The Senate now has to review that bill in its entirety and determine if they would like to pass that same version of the bill or make changes. Early chatter out of the U.S. Senate is that they want to make changes. They even want to start from scratch on some elements. Once the Senate has a version together and votes on it, that would have to go back to the U.S. House of Representatives. They would have to come to a consensus before there's a final version of the bill that goes to the president to sign. So we are in the early stages of this legislative process. Let's talk about some of the changes that were implemented when the American Health Care Act had these new amendments added by those three representatives. First, they created $8 billion of funding to go to the states in what was called some state stability and flexibility plans. Now, this allowed insurers to change premiums for those with pre-existing conditions as the primary change. One of the things that the Freedom Caucus members in the House were saying is, we still have premiums that are too high in health insurance, and we want to make sure that we can bring back things like high-risk pools to segregate out those people that had higher health insurance needs. The states have flexibility to do this. It's one of the options that's available to them uh, in the version, this version of the bill. It also gives states either a direct subsidy to do this or presents it in some other manner. There is about one-sixth of the states that said they would adopt the flexibility and go ahead and create high-risk pools based on the way the bill is written right now. Things that were left in this American Health Care Act were things like the per capita caps and block grants for Medicaid, taking away the entitlement to Medicaid and giving states instead just a set dollar amount to then administer their own Medicaid program. That was in the original version that remained unchanged in this new version that was finally voted on. And of course, it sunsets the Medicaid expansion and gets rid of the money for that as well. That's where the biggest dollar amount impact comes when you talk about what the, the fiscal estimate for how much this would cost or reduce the federal deficit. It's in the, in the area of about $800 billion. Most of that money comes from getting rid of that Medicaid expansion. Shortcomings, whenever you talk about moving people into different pockets of healthcare based on their age and their health condition and their income, we're talking about segregating and rationing care, and that's exactly what's happening in this version of the bill. Discriminatory, certainly. It brings back things like age rating and rating people based on underwriting for disability and pre-existing condition. That would be returned under this version of the American Health Care Act. Makes coverage unaffordable. If you are under 200% of the federal poverty level, not low enough to qualify for Medicaid, but lower income, and you're a little bit older, you're going to be paying excessive amounts for your health care premiums under this version of the bill. High risk pools, we know from experience, aren't the way to go when you look at affordability and quality of care. And when this bill was voted on, that Congressional Budget Office score, the estimate of the impact of how many people would lose insurance or the amount of money that this bill would cost was not yet available. That didn't come out for 20 days until after this bill was passed. You can read things like the Upton Amendment in its entirety. We make that link available. You can click on that information button to read these links. We also share with you the Health Affairs blog post where they talk through what this current version of the House bill looks like. We'll be coming back to you with more information once there's a Senate version and once there's more action on the Hill. In the meantime, send us an email if you want to tell your Affordable Care Act story and what a change to something like the American Health Care Act might mean for you. Thanks for joining us.